lips of clay to speak the oracles of God. And Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. Because you are worthy. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor wasn't feeling well, so um, he told me, like, bright and early this, not bright and early, but, hey, <laughs> you need to preach. So I said, well, praise God. You know what? The greater one lives in me. Amen. He lives in you, too. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... Um, I didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare, but you know what? I have the Holy Ghost. Praise God for that. So today I'm going to teach on six enemies of faith. Hallelujah. You know, um, the Bible, all throughout the Bible, it talks about faith. You know, you get saved by faith. We live by faith. You get healed by faith. Um, you know, we believe God for everything in our lives by faith. We believe God for our loved ones by faith. Amen. So today I want to talk to you about the six enemies of faith. Um, you know, the only battle that the Lord told us that we had to fight was the good fight of faith. You know, we, you know, we wrestle not against flesh, flesh and blood. You know, if something goes wrong in your life or somebody does something you don't like, you know, that person is not who you're fighting. Amen. You're fighting that spirit that's behind them. Amen. Hallelujah. So... I'm going to read uh, 1 Timothy 6.12 if you'd like to turn there. And if you don't have a Bible, there's one underneath the seat. The ushers can help you. If you need one, if you want to raise your hand, they can help you get one, okay? So if you don't have a Bible, there's one, and they'll put Scripture up on the uh, screen as well. 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hath professed a good profession before many witnesses. So our job is, as a Christian, to fight the good fight of faith. Nothing more. Nothing more. We have to fight. We have to hold. We have to believe and hold fast the word of God in our lives. Amen? And that is where our fight is. Amen? Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And not against principalities of power. We wrestle against Satan. Amen? And he's the one who tries to take us out. He's the one that lies to us all the time. He's the one that tries to tell you, oh, you can't do that. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen? There's nothing we can't do. There's nothing that God hasn't told us in his, wor in his word that we can't do. Amen? Let me correct that. But he told us to fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. And you know what? A fight is a fight, but it's good when it's a good fight. Because a good fight, we win. Hallelujah. Good fight. We win. So the number one, enemy number one is failure to understand what it means to be a new creature in Christ. Amen. A lot of people, they get saved. Okay. But you know, and, 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 and God forgives your sin, absolutely washes them away. But the thing is, you're a new creature. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. Amen. But you know, if, if you get Forgive me of your sins, that's good, but you need to know who you are. You're a new creature. Amen. Let's read that. I'm going to get ahead of myself here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I love that. Old things are passed away. You know, when I heard that, that set me free because I had a lot of old things hanging out there. But you know what? I'm a new creature now. When I got saved, when I gave my life to the Lord, when I got born again, I became a new creature, amen? As Jesse Duplantis says, a new creature with a new feature. All things are changed. You know, sometimes I look back at myself, and I look and I say, it was hard to believe that was me. You know, but I was in bondage. Anybody ever been in bondage? It's a horrible place to be, amen? And you don't know any better. I never heard about being saved till I was 22 years old. And the first time I heard, I got a hold of it. I got a hold of it. I needed something in my life. I needed things to change. And when I heard the gospel, I was like, God, this is what I'm looking for. You know, I got, um, I was raised Catholic. And so I knew nothing of nothing of salvation. And so um, whenever, um, before we got saved, we got saved April 22nd, 1983. But before I got saved, I had one dress and one pair of dress shoes. And I put them on. It was Easter and I said, God, I don't know where to go to church. I wanted to go to church, but I didn't know where to go. So I stayed home. I just cried. I cried out to God. It was less than a month. We got born again. Amen? But my heart was pure. I wanted God. I wanted the things of God. I wanted to change. I wanted a new life. And I didn't know it was available to me. 
So the thing is, it's good to be forgiven of your sins, but you have to know that you are a new creature in Christ. You know, it's a lack of understanding that thing that a lot of people live in defeat. They get born again. That's good. But you know, you got to know you're new. All those old things, all those old things, you know, we've all had baggage in the past. Those things that we did in the past, they're gone, forgotten. You know what? God forgives us, forgives us and you know what? We go on. Amen. And it doesn't matter. I mean, I've had people, you know, come up to me and say, well, you know how you used to be. You know, you did this. Yeah. But you know, that person ain't alive no more. He died and I'm risen again. I mean, I'm risen with Christ. Amen. Old things are passed away. Things are new in my life. It's fresh. Amen. You keep it fresh in your life because salvation is such a wonderful thing. It's the first thing. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, another thing is we're joint heirs. Yeah. Hallelujah. He just, I mean, he, he, he saved us, forgave our sins. He washed us clean, gave us a new life. And now we're heirs with God. Everything that God says we can have, we can have it. Amen. Hallelujah. Our enemy number two is failure to understand our place in Christ. You know, um, a lot of people don't know who they are. I mean, they're saved. They go to church. That's good. But you know what? We have authority of different things in our lives. Let's go um. Let's go to Acts 17. Now, Jesus constantly confessed who he is, what he is, and what his mission was in life. He had a mission, and he knew who he was. He was the son of God. Amen? You know what he is, what he is, what he had to do. Amen? And then what his mission was in life. His mission was to redeem us back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. Amen. That's who we, that's where we get our life from. Everything in our life should be surrounded around Christ. I like one time I was talking to Sheena. Actually, we was in a staff meeting. We was talking. And uh, we was talking about uh, lining up different events for church and different things. She goes, you know, this just isn't church. Church is my life. This is what I live. She goes, what we do I will, uh, I will do around church things because church things are more important. Amen. And that's the thing. I mean, the things of God should be more important to us than anything else in our life because that's what's going to change us. Amen. That's what's going to keep us. Amen. And that's what's going to keep your mind. There's so many things out here in the world trying to get at your mind and work at your mind. You watch the news for 10 minutes. I mean, I don't know how it is where you live, but like St. Louis News, first 10, 15 minutes is how many people got shot last night. Tell me I'm wrong. It's how many people got shot last night. Well, the thing is, you know, he keeps you. In him, in him. You know, the Bible also says, he whose mind is kept upon him, him will I keep in perfect peace. Keep you in perfect peace. All these things whirling around. I mean, if, if you watch stuff very long, it just gets to you. It's like, you know, you can't keep up with it. Um, we got some friends, and I, I was talking to her, and she is big into politics and loves, you know, I can't keep up with it. I can't keep up with it. It's like my, there's so many things going on. Amen. But all I know is Jesus is Lord. Jesus will take care of me. You know, we got a neighbor who did a, a fallout shelter, dug up, put $100,000 into this fall. I think it was $100,000, wasn't it? Anyway, and buried all this stuff and, and all this stuff. And you know what? You can't get into fear because we know he's bringing us out. Hallelujah. Well, no matter what happens, the Lord will bring us out. Amen. He's on my side. He's on your side. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know in him we live and move and have our being. Amen. That'll keep you. That'll keep you right there. Let's go to uh, Philippians 4.13. No matter how it looks. You know, we all go through tests and trials. There's nothing new under the sun. We all go through things in life. Amen. How many of you have gone through a test and trial in your life? Now, if your hand ain't up, you're lying. Because <laughs> we all go through things in life. Amen. Life's not perfect. Hallelujah. But Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Every day he strengthens us. Every day he, he gets us through another day. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, and, and that's the thing. If you keep your mind on him and you have that attitude of, the presence of God, keep that in your thoughts, keep that in your life. It'll keep you in peace. 
You know, if, if, if you stray from that and start thinking, well, with your natural thinking, well, you know, no, you can't do that. You've got to draw it back in and, and you get a hold of that mind. Amen. First John 4 and 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No matter what comes against you. I mean, we talk about it. Um, I'm, I'll be 16 a little bit, a little bit. But anyway, um, but th things have changed in my lifetime. How things have changed and so many things. And you know, the battle's in the mind. All this stuff floating around. You know, one time I was reading about, they were talking about people who forget things and uh, the, uh, Alzheimer's and, you know, all that's real and stuff. But they were talking, anytime somebody, like if you forget something, oh, you, maybe you have dementia. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. Amen. But I was reading this article and this doctor, he said, you know, um, he was walking around when they couldn't find his glasses, couldn't find his glasses. They were on top of his head. He said, but we have so much stuff, so many things on our mind nowadays that we forget. We forget. And it is. I mean, when I was a kid or when I was a young adult and first got married, it was so much more simpler than it is today. Things are harder today. You know, I mean, I look at young families, it's harder. It really is because, um, you know, I know people, they could get, get a loan on a handshake. You can't get a loan on a handshake anymore. Uh, you know, all, all the different things. But you know what? Um, greater is he that's in you. God will make a way for you. Amen. We appropriate the promises of God. He will make a way for you. Amen. Because uh, he's greater in us. Hallelujah. You know, whenever we read scripture, we, used to, we need to say, this is who I am. This is what I have in Christ Jesus. This is me. He's talking about me. Anytime there's 140 different references of who you are in Christ in the Bible, and especially in the epistles. And so anytime you read one of those, you need to say, that is me. God is talking about me. I am an overcomer. I can get through this thing. You know, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen? And in him I live and move and have my being. That's who we live in. Hallelujah. And if we keep our mind on that, he'll keep us. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.21. The enemy number three is failure to understand our righteousness. We have been made righteous. You ever have the devil try to beat up on you and tell you you're no good, you can't do this and this, and you know, you did this, and so that'll never work for you, but it'll work for them, but it won't work for you. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> yes, we have. So it's failure to understand righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We're not righteous in ourselves. We're righteous in him. Hallelujah. Don't you, aren't you just so glad God loves you and cares about you and he makes provision for you and every little thing that, that we know that we're righteous in him. He makes us righteous. Amen. When we receive him as Lord and Savior, he makes us righteous. Hallelujah. Um, you know, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. I mean, if we make a mistake, you know, don't beat up on yourself. You know what I do? I make a decision. I'm not doing that again. And then I go to first John one and nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us and to cleanse us and to cleanse us. Don't matter how many times and to cleanse us and to cleanse us and to cleanse us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, you know, a lot of times we beat ourselves up. We can be our own worst enemy. That's not what God has for us, is it? Bless God. It's not what he's got for me. Hallelujah. You know, but he cleanses and cleanses and cleanses. Because you know what? God's on your side. You know, I always think about this. I mean, I used to play softball. I loved it, you know, and, and, and I was relatively good. I, I did shortstop and catcher. But you know, God, we're running our race and we're running around first base, running around second base, getting to third base. And, you know, we're coming home and home and, and, and you know, and, and he looks at sinners. He looks at different people. And all he wants us to do is slide in home and you're safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to overcome. He doesn't want you to fail. He doesn't want people to go to hell. You know, a lot of times people say go to hell. That is horrible. That is horrible. We don't want anybody. You hear me? We don't want anybody. Anybody, anybody, anybody to go to hell. It's horrid. And we don't want that for anybody. Amen? 
And you know what? God doesn't want that for anybody. God's not a mean God. God's a good God. Amen. Say that. God's a good God. He's my God. He's for me. He's not against me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Amen. He is for us. He's not against us. Hallelujah. You know, we all make mistakes, but thank God he made provision for us. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. You know, he forgives us, and then he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, enemy number four is failure to understand our right to use the name of Jesus. Now, back in the 70s and 80s, everybody was talking about using the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to John 16, 23. But it is. He gave us the right to use that name. There's power in that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think about whenever he bought our redemption, how powerful God was to, for that redemption, for him to buy that and to set. He, he died for everybody in this world. It's whether or not they receive it. It's up to them. But he died for everybody. Amen. John 16, 23. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto you shall ask nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. You know, he wants you to receive, but he also wants your joy full. He don't want you down and beaten up and, you know, well, you know. No, lift your head up high. You're a child of the most high God. Amen. He's got something for you. Amen. He's got something for you to do. You know, if you're always down and out and downtrodden and stuff, you know, it's hard to get used by God. You know, people are looking for what we have. They are looking. They just might not know it yet, but they are looking for what we have. Amen. And you have, you have the words of eternal life. Amen. You know, I was always so impressed with people who knew scripture when I wasn't, when I wasn't saved. I was so impressed. Oh man, they know scripture because we were taught we couldn't interpret the scripture. So it was like, man, they know scripture and impressed me. You know, but the thing is, you know, you do. You have the words people need to hear. They need to be loved on. They need to be helped. You know, th this is a mean world out there. We need to be different. We need to be children of love. We need to love on people, help people, amen? Sometimes just smiling at people. It's nothing big, you know, just smile at people. Shake their hand. Give them a hug, but give them a real hug, amen? If you mean a hug, give them a hug, amen? Don't throw that little pat on the back. How you doing? No. Give them a hug. They might just need a hug. Amen? Hallelujah. But make it a holy hug. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the uh, 16th chapter of Mark, Jesus told his disciples, Go into all the world. Mark 16, 15, if you want to tur turn there. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Yes. Signs should be following you. Yes. Amen. Signs should be following you. Hallelujah. And the thing is, he, you know, we got to reach out to this world. They're looking for what you have. Hallelujah. But, you know, he just didn't tell it to the apostles, apostles of the Lamb. No, he told it to us. We're to take this mandate and go and tell and, and preach the gospel to every creature, every person. Because there's so many people out there. I saw a statistic the other day that only 10% of the population in the world know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. 10%. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's terrible. You know, we got a big job to do. You know, and God will help us do it, but I'm just saying we got a big job to do. That's why we use media to reach more people, reach more people. You know, we got to get the word out. Amen. Hallelujah. Enemy number five is failure to act upon the word. Now that's a biggie. We got to act upon the word of God. If God said it, we can have it. If it lines up with the word, if he said it, we can have it. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Hallelujah. Now, how, how easy is it to lean to your own understanding? We all do it. We all do it. But the, the first thing, we need to train ourselves. We need to get enough of the word in us. The first thought that comes to our mind is what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Because that's what's going to change it. 
You know, we can think up all these things. Oh, I could do this, or I could do this, or maybe this. You know what? What does the Bible say? That needs to be our very, 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 very first thought. What does the Bible say? Because that's what's going to cha change it. Hallelujah. People wonder why they don't receive their healing. <clears throat> and Matthew 8, 17 says, Himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Hallelujah. You know, we got to believe the scripture. I mean, there's things out there, you know, I mean, nobody likes to go to the doctor and nothing wrong with going to the doctor. You know, Tony Cook said one time, he goes, healing comes in many ways. There's no condemnation for going to the doctor. I mean, I've gone to the doctor. I still go to the doctor. I got an appointment this Thursday. I'm going to the doctor. <laughs> you know what? I just, you know, I, I do my, my yearly physical thing and all that. And, and that's just what I do. And, and, and then I can believe God from that point on, you know. But don't believe the report. You know, they can give you, say, whatever. But you know what? We have the word, and it, it overcomes the report. The word overcomes the report. But you have to work the word. You have to work it in your life. You just can't, you know, well, I read it once, and it's, you know, I know God wants me healed. It, it, it's a fight of faith, fighting the good fight. Remember what we're doing? We're fighting the good fight of faith. And you, you'll always fight it, always fight it, every day, in and out. We fight the good fight. We don't quit. Amen? Hallelujah. Enemy number six. <clears throat> Failure to hold fast to our confession of faith. That's a biggie too. Because <laughs> your mouth, our mouth, gets us in so much trouble. Let's go to Romans 10.10. 10. Hallelujah. We have to hold fast to our confession. You know, the more we say it, the more we believe it. You know, like when you're a kid and you write things down, like if you do something wrong, they make you write, you know, a hundred times. By the end of that hundred times, you know, you know what they made you write. Well, same with the Bible. You know, another good way is to write it because you remember it better if you write. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. We have to confess. I know I'm saved. I know, hallelujah, that I am the righteousness of God. So your confession is made unto, the, and unto salvation. We have to confess. And then Mark 11, 23 and 24. <clears throat> Everybody knows the scripture, but it's worth repeating again. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. You know, faith is measured by our confession. You'll have what you say. Be it good or be it bad. You know, you, uh, do you know some people who are just always negative? Well, you know, this happened. And then that gets better. And then they have another thing. Oh, well, you know, that, you know, it's just, and life's not fair. You know, life is just not fair. You know, another thing is, too, we let people put labels on us. You know, well, I have this, or I have that, or, you know, um, I'm ADHD and all this, and, and then, you know, and, but they label everybody. Have you noticed that? Especially with young kids and stuff. They label everybody. They have this or that. But no, no. I have the mind of Christ. Amen. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that lives in me. Amen. We have to know who we are. Amen. And the thing is, people can say what they want, but that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is what you make it, your confession. You know, we're going to say it, whether it's good or bad. Well, you know what? It's just it's easy to say something that's good as it is to say something that's bad. You know, I mean, you'll gravitate towards the bad because everybody says bad things. And you ever know sometimes you talk to people, you say, well, you know, somebody will, well, you know, this ain't going right. Well, they'll have something that's worse. You know, they try to trump you. All right, this is going, you know, and then it's this one and then this one. And I'm like, whoa, you know, that's not, that's not right. It's not right. I mean, there was one time we was talking about this guy in, in church and uh, he got hit in the head with a tree branch and he had an ugly gash in the back of his head. And then this other gentleman piped up, well, I hit a brick wall with my head. And then another one says, and I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, like, who's going to out-trump who and who got hurt where? I mean, come on. 
No, this isn't a competition of who had the worst. This is a competition of overcoming. Amen. We're overcoming. Amen. Not just get down there. Well, you know, one person's is worse than the other. And, you know, grandma had this. And so I'll probably get this. No way. No way. Hallelujah. No way. Don't let that come on you. Don't let that come on you. Don't let them label you. Let them label you a Christian. But let them label you an overcoming Christian. Hallelujah. Let them <clears throat> label you, you know, more than a conqueror. You know, it's, it's good to be a conqueror. But it's better to be more than a conqueror, amen? And we're more than conquerors. You know, and that's the thing. Don't let them label you that because we can overcome. Situations in life comes each and every one of our ways, amen? It's but what we do with it. Are you going to sit there in the mully grubs? Well, you know, no. Bless God, dust yourself off. Get up and do something, amen? Do something about it. You know, you have the words of eternal life. You know what to do. You've been taught, Amen. Do something with it. Apply it to your life. Change your life. Amen. Just don't stay there. Don't stay there. Don't let somebody put you there. Don't let somebody label you there. You know, well, you'll never be rich. That's not what the Bible says. Amen. God wants to supply all you need. He wants everything in your life. Now, that don't mean he wants you to be a millionaire. If you can handle, I think he did. A lot of people couldn't handle it. A lot of people that were millionaires, they wouldn't be here this morning. Hallelujah, or in other churches, I should say. I wouldn't say that about y'all. But anyway, but they wouldn't be in church. They'd be out enjoying their million dollars. Well, you know, money comes, money goes. I can tell you that because before we got saved, me and Pastor Dave, we had a lot of money, a lot of illegal money. <laughs> and money comes and money goes. Danielle one day said to me, she was, didn't you stash any of that money away? <laughs> well, we blew it all. So... <laughs> But we, we did. We made big money, good money. And what can you say? Hallelujah. It's like the woman with the issue of blood, what she said. It's Mark 5, 25 through 34. If I may touch, this is what she said. If you look in the Bibles in italics, that means somebody spoke it. If I may touch but the clothes, I shall be whole. Jesus said, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You know, what she said is what she said. Did you know what, though? And it just, no, this is from God. She heard about Jesus. You know what that means? Somebody had to be talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. So somebody talking about Jesus, she heard about him, and she came. So if, had, had they not been talking about Jesus, she would have never heard. So what do we need to be doing? Talking about Jesus, amen? Another thing, too, I mean, if you go out to lunch or something, you know, if you talk about the Lord, you keep out of a lot of trouble. You keep out of a lot of trouble. You keep that mouth right. This is, there's so much to talk about what God's doing and what he's done and how all the glory that he, things he's done. You know, we don't need to be talking bad, talking things of doubt and unbelief, talking about people. It's not right. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. You know, I got my baggage. I just don't care to share all of it. <laughs> We all got things. We all got things going on. But amen. But we know what the answer is. And we, you know what? I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. Amen. God has things for me. God has things for you. There's things and there's people you're going to be able to touch that nobody else will. And you know, we're going to have to give account to that. Give account for it. So that's my sermon for this morning. We talk about fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight. It's not a bad fight. It's not a losing fight. It's a good fight. That means we win. And you just keep on fighting. Because if you quit, you'll never win. Quitters never win. <laughs> I remember playing sports. Quitters never win. That's true. The same way with your faith. The same way with your walk with God. We just don't give up. We don't give in. Hallelujah. What else are you going to do? You know, somebody said to me one time, they go, oh, this is just so hard living for God. I thought, are you crazy? This is the safest thing I've ever done. The worst that happens is you die. And you know what? We go to heaven. So what's so bad? Amen. But the thing is, you know, they were like, oh, you know, but no, it's not hard. This is wonderful. This is safe. This is glorious. This is an adventure that never ends. Never ends. It's an adventure. You know what? And, and we're just so far in it. But God's got things for us to do. You know, God's got things for each and every person here. Everybody here is special. And God has a job for us. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Well, let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, you give us the ability to fight that good fight of faith. Lord, we just thank you that you're our God, you're our Lord, you're our Savior, and Lord, it is a good life. But if there's somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they say, man, I want that new life. Lord, I want to be that new cre creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become new in my life. I need a new start. God, I just want to get things right with you. If there's somebody here today that would say that, I just want a new beginning, a fresh start. Old things are passed away. God forgets everything that you've done in the past. And Lord, I want that fresh start with you. If you would raise your hand this morning, hallelujah. If anybody would like to raise their hand and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and have a new beginning in life, raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, if there's anybody who needs prayer for anything else, healing in your body, how agreement for situations in life. Amen.
was an interest fan during Lars. First of all, he shared the seven years for her family. They had a lot of death and trauma in her family. Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you move on your behalf. Lord, that you make yourself real to them. Lord, you said you send us the comforter. And we thank you that the Holy Ghost is ever present, ever present, to minister to this family. And we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for Lisa. We thank you, Lord, that healing belongs to her. We thank you that by his stripes she's healed from this pregnancy, the different things, the, 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 the blood pressure and the kidney and all that is healed. And Lord, she'll come back and give glory to God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Lord, in this situation, Lord, you need Jesus. You need to know you as a personal Lord and Savior and get a hold of these things. And Lord, we just thank you for it. We thank you for moving on his behalf. Make yourself real to him. Show him. Show him, Lord, that you are the healer, that you are God, that you are Lord. So, Lord, whatever it takes, so Lord, just thank you for the healing of your son. And that makes Ashley a witness to her dad. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, let's just lift our hands and thank God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are the healer. Hallelujah. <coughs> you know, the Bible says, I told God my microphone. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we say so. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, for announcements, um, I guess you noticed John and Alice wasn't here. Uh, their daughter Jessica's getting married today. And so in Jefferson City, so that's where they're at. And other people out, Ken Ronda's out, uh, different people are out. So just wanted to let you know. But last time when their son David got married, some people, oh, I didn't know. Well, Jessica's getting married today. So pray for him. Amen. Congratulate him when they get back. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome our visitors this morning. Amen. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you coming. Uh, come back. We're family here. Amen. We, uh, it's good, it's good. We, we are glad you're here with us. You're welcome anytime. We have different things. We have youth group tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, which Adam will be teaching. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I said, we was talking the other day because John and Alice, uh, they just kind of found out. She was supposed to get married yesterday. They got married today. And so I, they said, well, should we have youth? And I said, well, I threw it out. I said, Adam, you he goes, yeah, I can do that. So, amen. Don't forget nursing home ministry coming up August 2nd. See Kevin about that if you have any questions or like to be involved with that. Uh, Victory Kids, uh, Super Sunday's coming up July 28th, which was today. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pontiac Revival, will be praying for that. That's next weekend. And then church picnic, September 1st. We'll be going to the Southside Park and we're doing a pitch in. Everybody bring stuff. We'll have food and things for the kids. It's always a good time. Uh, we had a real good time last year. It was just a beautiful, it was just beautiful, sunny. They have a fishing pond. Amen. That's a big thing in our family. So anyway, praise God. So let's stand. I thank Rick and Carrie, all the way imported from Fairbury, Illinois. <laughs> or should I say Forest? <laughs> Forest, Illinois. Amen. They go to Pastor Kim's church. I'm sure you're on your way back from camp meeting and stopped to visit. So we're glad you came. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, and we're so grateful. We're grateful for the word. Lord, we just thank you for everything you're doing. Lord, as we go throughout this week, Lord, make us opportunists. Look for areas that we can speak into people's lives. Lord, we need to be that witness to people because they're searching. They're searching out there. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for that. Lord, we just thank you that we left Leave this place changed. In Jesus' holy name, amen. You're dismissed. Welcome to Victory Family Church. Thank you for joining us for today's service. If you are new to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. 
It would also be appreciated if you would enable notifications so that way you will be notified of any new service that we are streaming. Feel free to browse any content that we have available to help you with your walk with God. If you like today's service, please give us a thumbs up as it would be greatly appreciated. We would also love to hear from you. If you would like to leave a comment, praise report, or testimony, please do so in the comment box below. We're also on SoundCloud. Follow our page so that way you can stay up to date with the latest audio recordings of services. You can also like, repost, share, and even download these services for later listening. Thanks again for joining us today at Victory Family Church. We hope you have a blessed day and that we will see you again very soon.